Girl, so today I'm going to be talking to you about childbirth. It's very important for you to keep in mind that there is a very wide variety of different kinds of births. I don't think that any two birth stories I've ever heard have ever been the same, and you're going to have a lot of options. So we're going to talk a little bit about all those options that you have. The first kind of birth that I want to talk about is a hospital birth. In the hospital, you can either have a natural unmedicated birth or you can have a medicated birth where there's a spinal block, epidural, or something else to just ease the contractions along the way. You can ask for assistance, but it's up to you to decide and it's mostly, you should try to make that decision ahead of time. You know, sometimes ha things happen in the moment where you actually are going to have to do it anyway. You can go into labor thinking that you're not going to have medication when halfway through you're going to have to ask for the medication. That's what happened to me during my first birth and I clearly, I thought that I was going to be able to, you know, I didn't think that it was going to be that big of a deal, but I was uninformed and I wasn't, I hadn't planned as much as I should have. So I definitely did go into it unplanned and I ended up getting medication when I didn't want to. Had I known my options beforehand, I think that I would have made a better educated decision. But like I said, it's always important to inform yourself as much as you possibly can. Also, there are some hospitals that will allow water births, <laughs> that will allow water births, and if that's the kind of birth that you want to have, you can also have that. Hi. You can also have that kind of birth, which water births are supposed to ease the contractions and the transition for the baby is supposed to be smoother. And the reason for that is because the baby is inside the placenta, which is full of the amniotic fluid. So he's coming from fluid and transitioning into the water. And that is less of a shock for the baby. So that when he takes his first breath, it's not so, not, not, there's not so many emotions. Obviously, birth is supposed to be a little bit of a shock for the baby, but it's not as shocking. I actually have a home birth video here on YouTube. If you haven't checked it out, I'm going to post a link somewhere around here and in this description box so you can check it out if you get a chance. I absolutely love that video because it was a home water birth and it definitely helped the contractions. It helped ease the pain. I, I actually, I wasn't in any pain at all with my second birth. That was my second birth though. Um, so yeah, you should definitely check that out. Um, like I said, water births are going to help you and the baby. There, it's, it's a way, it's like a natural form of medication. Really, it's not medication, but it is going to help you with um, the contraction and pain and that's what you're feeling. So there are some hospitals that will be willing to work with you for that. There's also birthing centers that you can um, try to, and most birthing centers do have uh, water births. They are water birth of facilities, so you can look into that. The other kind of birth that I'm going to talk about is home births. And I think sometimes people have the idea that a home birth automatically means a water birth, but that's not always the case. You can have a home birth and not have a baby in the water. You, sometimes you plan to have a baby in the water, but it doesn't always turn out that way. I've heard stories of where moms have their babies on the couch, in, the, in, in places you really wouldn't imagine, on the bed, you know, just different things because birth really is unexpected. But the important thing is to plan for it. I know that for my home birth, um, I had everything planned for it, but I also had the backup plan in case something did go wrong. Hi, baby. <laughs> in case something did go wrong, we did have the backup plan. We did have the opportunity to have a hospital nearby, so we were able to have that option. And you know, I had decided beforehand whether I wanted to have, if the case, if it did come to the point that I had to transfer to a hospital, would I want a C-section? Would I want medication? You have to keep in mind all those other things. So besides the main plan that you have, you should always also have a backup plan. Have a doctor that agrees with everything that you have to say. Um, I went into, during my second pregnancy, I didn't think that I was gonna be having a home birth. It had never even crossed my mind. And if somebody would have even given me the idea to have a home birth, I would have turned it down. But um, after making my research and finding no doctors were able to accommodate any of the things that I wanted, um, I had to settle for uh, a midwife. And in reality, that was such a blessing because it turned out to be everything that I wanted to be. What are you doing? So make sure that you make your research. Make sure that you know, your doctor knows what, you're, what you want. Make sure that if you are... What are you doing, Riley? <laughs> make sure that if your plan is to have a hospital birth, the nurses, the staff, everybody that's going to be by your side is clear about what you want, what you don't want. Um, and sometimes things don't go as planned, so you could, you could have a C-section, you know, whether you've had, um, there are medical complications that will lead to having a C-section, don't. Sometimes um, there's no other option besides that, so keep your options open, always have a plan, um, and that's probably the best advice that I could always give you, to inform yourself as much as you can about the kind of birth that you want to have, and also about 
your options, your second plan, always have a backup. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it was informative. And I'll see you guys soon.